so we are Deep Swarm. I'm Sumit. Uh, this is Joshua Mayerfield and Stephen, a lead engineer. And uh, I think they are the teams. Uh, so I'll let Joshua take the charge of us. All right, so um, once again, I'm Joshua Lee. I'm co-art director on Swarm. And we are a bug-themed third-person MOBA game. So um, between the last time we met and now, the art team on Swarm had two primary goals. One was to uh, populate our level with more finalized assets. And second was to um, figure out our animation and reading pipeline. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the animation and reading pipeline first, since we'll see the level population in the demo later. So um, here is one of our main hero characters. This is uh, Vex Bula. Um, remember I showed you like an early iteration of her rig uh, back during our first presentation. Um, it worked out pretty nicely, like all the animations were going smoothly, but it turns out that this rig has a lot of issues. So for example, we have like all these um, uh, edge flow issues. These deformations really don't work out well. And um, additionally, there are some boning issues with the wings that didn't go well with Unreal. So we, we stumbled through a lot of these issues over the past couple weeks, but I'm glad we did, because now we have a, a firm pipeline for how we want to do the rigging and animation of all of our other hero characters. So here is our um, completed rig. As you can see, she has a much nicer edge flow. And uh, here we have like a, a quick proof of concept that we can do custom animations. This is our uh, flying animation. Currently, we're predominantly using Mixamo animations, but um, it's good to know that for the extra stuff we do need that needs to be done customly, we can do that. So um, that wraps it up pretty much for art. I'd like to pass things on to Steven here. So, uh, so for engineering, our main goal was getting Warwick ready uh, with all four of his abilities. And so we would be able to put both heroes. So for that, his first ability is that he charges forward. And if he hits an enemy in the path, then he will damage that enemy. And if he hits a wall, he'll spawn or, uh, a rock will be spawned that will fall down. If that lands on an enemy, it will damage them. Otherwise, it will be a movable object that uh, Warwick can pick up and throw. And uh, this leads into the second ability. Uh, which allows Wormica to pick and throw both movable objects and enemies. So we can pick up any enemy pawn and turn it into a ball, basically, and throw it uh, basically the length of the map at this point. Uh, there's still a lot of pounds and uh, be down. Uh, in addition, uh, his next move is to form an anthill, so it spawns a hill around him. And, he is, and if he uses it again while within the anthill, then he digs down to the bottom layer. And if he Uses, uh, and if he uses his ultimate ability while within the anthill, he'll bring down the anthill and damage all the enemies within inside, inside of it. Uh, other, if he isn't in an anthill and uses his ultimate, then it will just cause damaged enemies within his range. So another major uh, thing with the engineer team is working on was the minimap. So now we actually have a minimap that uh, will represent not only where the player is uh, in terms of but also the height of the enemy. So if they're above you, it will become an arrow up. And if they're below you, it will become an arrow down. Uh, in addition, there's an outside border on each of the uh, on each of the enemy uh, representations, and the color of that border represents uh, what team the enemy's on. So you can identify your teammates from that, as well as the inner color representing which enemy it is. So you can identify exactly which enemy is at which location. So a, we also implemented a basic lobby. Uh, we don't have it in this build because it requires six players to connect to start the game, but uh, that's there. And we also have basic communication uh, using the minimap. So you're able to call for help at your position. Uh, next semester we'll be adding voice communication. Uh, basically, uh, we'll be able to see this. Uh, This is the anthill. Uh, you can see through it, so you can see any enemies that would be within the 
that are within it. And if I use it again before it uh, gets destroyed, it'll teleport me down to the bottom layer. Each other up.
So, uh, the, in two weeks, the game has just gone gangbusters. It looks fantastic. So, uh, you guys did a great, great, great job. Uh, there's a few things that I think uh, really will help for, uh, for Showcase. Definitely tint the uh, player skins, uh, without, without a doubt, even if, they look, uh, even if they look garish. Another thing you may want to think about is, uh, as a quick fix is if you can't tint them, then think about two separate uh, two separate meshes, I'm sorry, uh, textures, where if you have, uh, for example, you've got the uh, uh, the minions will have uh, have their texture map, they'll have their predominant uh, uh, areas where they'll have their shoulder plate areas and their arms and all that stuff. So what you want to do is, for, for, for any and all of the enemies, you want to figure out like, what their predominant uh, carapace uh, lo locations are, and then you want to uh, tint those with uh, uh, you know, a blue-red uh, sort of uh, color scheme, where you know, Vex, Vexpila, for example, is predominantly yellow jacket, but even she's got er uh, parts of her anatomy that would be specifically uh, either red team or blue team, uh, particularly equipment, boots, you know, stuff like that. So figure out what elements are actually sort of like the sort of like the predominant like outward facing color, and then tip those. If you create two separate texture maps, then you can just for 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 a showcase hard code. Oh, player A has this color, player B has this color. It's a quick fix. Um, that is probably going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Uh, in the next couple of days, and then obviously going after um, all of those uh, those hard crashes. Uh, can you talk about what your uh, what? Uh, oh, can you uh, talk more about uh, the goals for uh, next semester as it relates to um, uh, what you are uh, prioritizing? Okay. Uh, so priority number one, obviously, is just balancing and optimizing so it runs very well. Then we need, uh, we're going to do Steam integration so we have a better matchmaking system and voice chat. Uh, then in adding the third character, uh, the third playable character. We have like a half like, partially designed for the third character so uh, hopefully like during the winter break we'll get a proper design for it. 
and uh, of all things that uh, right now we are using the Vexpola model just tinted in different color for Omega. Okay. So we need to like have uh, a regular animated model for Omega. So that's like our first important goal. Do you plan to have more than one map? Uh, no. Just one map? Just one map. It's fine. What about um, analytics? Uh, right now we don't, we have, don't have anything planned. We do. Uh, we're definitely going to. I, I highly encourage you to add in-game analytics to your roadmap because yeah. that uh, data is incredibly valuable. And it, besides, it's also uh, something that every single game studio uses, so it's definitely something you want to become familiar with. Any other questions? Yeah, I